The present and the future of aviation explained in Fly, in partnership with Eurocontrol. A day like any other at Trapani Airport in Sicily. The Italian Air Force's F-16s are taking off for surveillance missions in the skies of southern Europe. Behind each flight, there's a huge amount of study and preparation. The base's commander, Colonel Carlo Moschini, is personally taking part in today's training mission, the simulated interception of suspicious civilian aircraft. Traffic control is crucial to surveillance interception activity. The Roma control area centre near the Ciampino airport is the largest of its kind in Europe and controls nearly two-thirds of Italy's airspace. All flight activity from the army missions in Trapani to commercial flights over the Alps can be observed from here. That's because both civilian and military controllers are working together, side by side. Obviously, airspace is not expandable, so we have to optimize its capacity for those wanting to use it. The way Italian air traffic is organized allows us to be among the first in Europe to enforce the principle of dynamic use of airspace. That means being ready to use airspace according to particular needs on any given day. We use the same systems and the same displays as civil providers. Our system lets us use the same data in order to carry out operations to a very high standard, as we're all on the same wavelength here. Working next to each other, we can operate in real time, safely and efficiently. That is the concept of flexible use of airspace established by Eurocontrol. Airspace flexibility is a way of uniting military and commercial flights in ever more crowded skies. There are no more no-go areas for either, rather a dynamic day-by-day, hour-by-hour management of all planes in the air. Here is an example. A fighter aircraft can go from one military space in red to another, crossing a civilian airway in blue, which will be closed at a specific altitude for a certain period of time. Modern fighter planes require larger activity areas due to their speed. The military training area can be made bigger by closing an entire civil airway, which will reopen once the army exercise is finished. All of which means civil and military coordination is a must. Currently, the airspace is not considered anymore as civil or military, but is a common resource, a continuum where all the needs are accommodated. The first tangible result of the flexible use of uh, the airspace is that the military are sharing their training areas with the civilians. And this is uh, bringing uh, extra capacity in a very timely moment where there is an increasing growth in civil air traffic. Immediately after 11 September, Eurocontrol, jointly with NATO, started to work on the development of security measures to address the new threat. The first uh, program of work uh, was addressing the enhancement of civil military procedures to uh, cope with security incidents in the air. The focus now is on an early threat detection of uh, possible suspicious flights and also the facilitation of a better management and handling of uh, security incidents in the air. Like Trapani in Italy, Rostock Lager Airport in Germany near the Baltic Sea is a military airport open to civil traffic. 
One side is for commercial planes, the other for army ones, but they share the same runway. There's growing traffic to other German cities operated by low-cost and traditional airlines, as well as many charter flights to holiday destinations. On the military base, the headquarters of the 73rd Fighter Wing of the Luftwaffe, there's a training center for pilots flying the Eurofighter Typhoon aircraft. Again, coordination is paramount. We have on the military side, of course, military control personnel. During military working hours, there are army personnel manning the control. Then there's the civilian company, which has employed ex-army personnel with military know-how to control air traffic outside of military hours. We have a shared use contract that deals with the basics, which has been in place since 1992. The important thing is that everyone here agrees on all the procedures. To do that, we have weekly meetings, but outside of those, we work in very close cooperation. At the moment, we have flights to Munich and Cologne, which are very busy, especially during the holidays. In a year, we deal with between 9 and 10,000 passengers. But I think that by working with an information exchange and respecting the fact that the army is in charge here, we'll always find the right answers so that the two systems can coexist and both have their requirements met. After the interview, Colonel Schick takes to the skies in his typhoon in a mission involving several planes. The Typhoon is a state-of-the-art fighter used by air forces in Britain, Germany, Italy, Spain and Austria. As Europe's airspace becomes more crowded, it will need to be less divided. It's for this reason that authorities are working on the concept of a single European sky. The single European sky will be a single airspace for all the users and it will supersede the current uh, fragmented system based on national borders. For this to be uh, a reality, the civil and military operations must be fully integrated. The single European sky can only be a reality if we achieve an appropriate civil and military cooperation. The EU has said air traffic will almost double by 2020. With so many more planes in the air, the aviation industry needs not just new tools and technology, but also better information management so that jumbo jets and fighter jets can share the skies safely.